Timestamps are in the description below. If you decide to click on one, it will take you to the news article of your choice. Hello everyone, Stephen Clark here and friends, back with another news from all over Thailand and Southeast Asia. So, what have we got today? Let's have a look. Uh, number one killer in Thailand? Hmm. A pay rise for the Thai workers. Very interesting, actually. Taiwan challenges the Thai government over its new visa requirements for their citizens. A Thai national in Shanghai murders his girlfriend and her parents. And long queues and delays at Swampy Airport, which is Bangkok Airport for those that don't know, or Sawinapum Airport. And a job opportunity in Thailand, if you're into doing the news. But first up, number one killer in Thailand. The Ministry of Health has identified that cancer is the number one killer of Thailand's citizens since 1998. I disagree with that completely. I think it's old age. But let's continue. Now, out of 122,757 new cases diagnosed in 2019, 73,000 patients have died. Not a good thing. It is widely believed that lung cancer is a leading disease amongst Thais. But this has not been confirmed. In comparison, the number of road deaths has decreased from 36.2% of 100 people in 2015 to 32.7 out of every 100,000. In the World Health Organization latest report, around 21,000 to 24,000 annually over recent years. Well, it's good to see the road death toll is decreasing. Thailand's minimum daily wage is going up. Well, sort of. The National Wage Committee has singled out nine provinces for a six baht increase in the minimum daily wage. Fantastic news. While the rest of the country gets a five baht increase. The Permanent Secretary of Labor, Suthai Sakasol, that's right, Suthai Sakasol. <laughs> confirms that the nine provinces are Chambri in eastern Thailand, Phuket in the south, Bangkok, Patham Thani, Northambri, Samat Prakon, Samat Sakon, Pachambri in central Thailand. So the highest daily minimum wage in the country will now be on offer in Chambri and Phuket at 336 Thai baht a day. The lowest is in Narathawat and Patani at 313 baht a day. The increase is being awarded to reflect the economical situation in the country and once approved by cabinet should be in place from January the 1st 2020. Fantastic news for the workers of Thailand. And in case you're wondering how much 5 baht is it's about 20 cents US and believe me uh, there's a lot of things you can buy with 20 cents back in 1952 the Taiwanese government is concerned the Thai government's new visa rules being imposed on its citizens traveling to Thailand which launches with a new application scheme which now requires Taiwanese citizens applying for a Thai visa to show evidence of sufficient funds for their Ask trip. Taiwanese nationals to submit bank statements from the previous three months. Well, this has made some Taiwanese very angry, saying they are treating Taiwan like a third world country, which it is not. Taiwanese applicants for visas are also required to apply online and then make an appointment. Taiwanese are asking officials to protest to the Thai government. And they have also pointed out that Thais visiting Taiwan are granted a free visa on entry. It is believed the Taiwanese government has already complained strongly to the Thai government. 
Meanwhile, the Thai representative office in Taipei is stating that the new visa application process is not restricted to Taiwanese nationals, but applies to other nationalities too, including British and French. So it looks like the Taiwanese are very upset about the new visa rules for their citizens to enter Thailand. And for Thailand, this could not come at a worse time, as their tourist industry has dropped drastically. Shanghai, police have arrested a man for the murder of his girlfriend and her parents, all found shot dead. A 27-year-old man is currently under arrest for the murders. The 26-year-old girl and her parents were found dead by the village mayor, who went to check why the father was not at work and had made the gruesome discovery. Police believe the bodies were in the house since November the 28th. They also stated there was no weapons found at the scene. Neighbours told police they heard gunshots on November the 28th but thought nothing of them and didn't think it was anything serious and paid little attention to it. Police made the arrest of the suspect. They spotted him at 7-Eleven in Chiang Mai. When he was caught, he had a semi-automatic 9mm pistol and 14 bullets. The man confessed to the murders, saying he had acted out of jealousy. He told police his girlfriend had been communicating with an ex-boyfriend on the line application. He said after he killed his girlfriend, her parents rushed him to investigate the gunshot. And since they were witnesses, he decided to murder them as well. On a side note, he was taken back to the scene of the crime to, well, reenact the crime. And there was a nice crowd there waiting for him who wanted to lynch him on the spot because the family was very popular in a small village. They actually had trouble getting him back out of there. Hi there, this is Mark reporting for Talk Back Thailand. Still long queues at Swampy, I'm afraid, and the authorities are blaming each other. A post about long waits at the airport queues at Swampy yesterday has sparked an immediate response from the immigration spokesman. Hundreds of people were queued up for hours in the departure areas as they waited to process after checking in. A spokesman responded to reporters after claims on a Facebook page, JS100 Traffic Radio, that there were terrible queues at Swampy yesterday morning. The police colonel placed the blame on airports of Thailand who contract a body scan and hand luggage security check systems on the western side of the second floor section of the airport. He told people that the downstairs at immigration everything was running normally. <clears throat> immigration chief told immigration that during the peak traffic hours all booths were staffed and that was exactly what happened at immigration. The spokesman placed the blame on the queues firmly in the court of the airports Thailand PLC who say the problem was responsible of the AOT who were checking carry-on luggage and body scanning between check-ins and immigration areas. He said immigration did not want to elevate the situation that received many complaints yesterday. He said that passengers on many flights were being processed at the same time. Um, I have a little footnote with that. Uh, I don't believe that's true. I was there and it took me from the check-in to my aircraft four hours. This is Mark reporting for Talkback Thailand. Hi there, Mark reporting for Talkback Thailand. Here's a job for a lady or a man who wished to become a writer. The Tiger is currently seeking a full-time writer in English. You may have journalism experience, but flair and speed and enthusiasm are much more important. You will also need a solid understanding of modern social media and more broadly online media landscapes. A legal visa and a work permit are included in the job. So if you would like to apply for the job to get yourself off the bar stool, off the beach, apply with your CV outlining where you would like to be the ideal candidate to work for the Tiger. Mark your responses writer and send it to info the tiger at gmail.com and good luck. I hope you like writing five and a half days a week. It doesn't say the salary, but uh, you'll be in a beautiful place to do it. This is Mark reporting for Talkback Thailand.